Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Okay, let's start the share screen. Share screen on two. Okay, good morning, everybody. Somebody give me a sound check. Let me know if you hear me okay. Let me know how everything is going. I got some cool stuff I want to share with you. Testing one, two, three. You guys hear me? Somebody give me a sound check in the room, please. All good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Connie and Karen to the rescue. Miguel, too. All right. Okay, let's see who's in the room. I uh, see if uh, Cheryl's showing up. Oh, Cheryl's not here today. Too bad. Okay. All right. I have, I've been, I, know I say this every freaking time because every freaking time we have sort of a new, 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 new refinement. But I have a very, very cool refinement I want to share with you that, um, that I'm actually, we, we, this, this, is the, this is the other reason why I'm holding back the EA because, you know, there's always like, a few more logic traps that, that we try to um, um, enclose. So this is sort of, I think, going to be the, the last of the logic traps that I wanted to, to add into the, um, into the EA before I release it to you guys. But it's very, 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 very cool. So let's get big. Okay. So everybody's seen, let's, let's, look, let's do this on NASDAQ because this is a better, there's always a better example of what I want, what I want to show you. Uh, once you guys see it, you're going to go, oh, why didn't I think of that first? Okay. All right. So first order of business. Everybody's good. Everybody hear me. Everybody seeing the screen. We're all good, right? Somebody give me a uh, thumbs up there. Um, I actually, you know what? Let's just, because every, it, I'm starting before, um, before everybody is uh, still in the room. And so I, um, because everybody straggles and, I, and, and, and this is so, so cool that I just wanna make sure that everybody's in the room before we, um, before we show this to you. Okay, everybody's straggling in. Let's give it, let's give it like two more minutes to, till, till we actually hit the time. Um, in the meantime, just let you know, um, kind of wanted to share this with you a little bit too. So this is only a couple of days worth of trades, right? So it's nothing, but, this is the long side of the combo, right? This is the long side of the combo. And uh, did I screw this up? This seems like, yeah, this is this, this, uh, I, I started, hang on a second. I'm sorry, guys. Let me, let me do the, I screwed this up. The custom analysis was from Tuesday, I believe. Let's do this right. Yeah, okay, that's correct. Yeah, I was like, okay, so what you can see is, 241 pips, right, on the long side. This is trading 14 pairs. Um, also, very, very important, um, even though it's a tiny little account, the exact same practices on the large account. What is super important to understand is you have a $1,000 account, 2000 whatever, doesn't matter. We're going to use the basis as that. You have 14 pairs. If you're trading anything more than 1x, uh, 1x lever, you are grossly, grossly, grossly uh, over levered. Grossly over levered. Let's see, um, actually we have employment index. Let me see how that's working. Hang on a second. Let me see the, uh, oh, good numbers on, on all. Oh, look, look how cool the uh, MyFX book is. All the good numbers. Wow, that's really nice. I love this pop-up. Um, positive news. You know, like if you, if you wanna want just gamble on the trades, let's, uh, although unless, unless what, what happened? The, um, let me see. Um, I don't know that one. Oh, shut up, Alexa, please. Shut up. Uh, let me see what happened on the. Uh... Uh, did the uh, is the. Um... Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just uh, I'm just curious to see. Let's just take a look at the because today was a pretty big day as far as calendar goes. Let me, um, let me just do this. Sorry, I want to I want to duplicate this because I don't want to lose I don't want to lose this tab and talk to you about it for a second. 
wondering why I, I did the inflation uh, numbers come in. Come on, baby. Come on, load, 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 load. Okay, let's see what's got. Plummet was hot. Manufacturing was hot. Prices paid. Oh, prices, well, prices paid were hot, but like, you know, huh? Interesting. Interesting. Market, market not liking the, uh, maybe the prices paid. That's really interesting. Maybe they were looking for even hotter employment. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, you know, we'll see how that plays. Um, I guess it's, it's also manufacturing, so it's not as important. Anyways, all right. No, um, uh, no trades here. But what I was going to say is back to to um, the idea here. If you got fourteen pairs, which is what I'm trading. That's like four. Imagine maximum amount of trades is 14. If you do anything more than one times lever, you're going to be grossly over levered because you don't want to be ever more than 10 times levered, right? So the very nature of the, the very composition of, of the portfolio stops you from doing anything more than 1x, 1x lever. So it means a thousand units per every thousand dollars in your, in your account. That's how you should be doing it because that way you have enormous amount of control. Um, on the PL. And you know, if you have 10,000, you do you would do 10,000 units. You have 100,000, you do 100,000 units. But the point is just one time because that would be the proper uh, proper way of doing it. Now, the long side, hang on, let me show you the long side. So the long side, excuse me, that was the, that was the long side. The short side is mildly down, which is how it should be because you're not going to get both sides winning all the time. The point is one is 250 to the good, this is 56 to the bad. Net, net, you're 200 to the good over two days, right? Um, if, you, if you're 200 to the good over a week, you've really, you've done a terrific job. You've just done a terrific, terrific job. So um, it's just, uh, those are the tactics that I wanted you guys to employ if you're using it across a multi-instrument um, multi trading portfolio. Is that clear to everybody? Somebody give me a yes on that to make sure that that you using proper proper money management techniques. Um, that way, you'll never get into trouble. Um, you whatever whatever size account you have will always be you know be there. The beautiful thing about, of course, trading you know 14, 15 on on, a, on an auto trading basis, you you don't really care. You know, I'm just like I'm I'm just basically checking in once um once every couple of hours to make sure that the algos are running. I'm not managing any trades. I'm not doing anything uh, specific. Whereas, where I'm, whereas with a single instrument like NASDAQ, I'm much more engaged on both sides of the market, looking at, looking at how each one of these trades <coughs> excuse me, sets up. Ugh, back to allergies. All right, so here's a cool thing that I want to show you. Everybody's in the room now, so you guys can, can, can be ready for my reveal. First and foremost, let's strip the indicator down to one, one thing only, trend break. Let's make everything else false. Let's kill everything but the trend break, okay? Um, the trend break is a little bit small here. Um, I don't know, you know, if we do this, let me, let me just see, let me see if this, if this might be a little bit more visually engaging. Um, that's kind of interesting. Let's see if we can do this. I wonder if um, I want to do this orange. This orange pops up nicely. Yes, blue. Orange, and maybe we'll make it like just to, just to make it, just to make it clean. I haven't seen how that looks. Does that look better or worse? Is it, is it clearer? Somehow I feel this doesn't look as good. A little bit more washed up. Maybe we should go back to the blacks. All right. Sorry, I'm just messing around with the uh, with the visuals. Um. Because all I want to do is just focus on one thing, which is the trend break. Because it's, it's so interesting when you when you realize what I'm about to show you. Let's make this three just to make it big. Because it's the it's the only it's the only arrow we have on the chart now. I think that's a little bit clearer, right? We see the arrow here. We see the arrow here. Pretty good, right? 
You guys with me on this? All right? Is that okay? Back to black. <laughs> Boris says back to black. I, I love I love Amy uh, Weinstone's one of my favorite songs. All right. Okay. Uh, let's get a little bit bigger too, so maybe you guys can just see it. All right. So. So. The thing that works is you know we can see this in, in FX. You can see it in uh, in my uh, uh, in my. Uh, trades on, on, on NASDAQ, you can see it even, even in, uh, uh, in uh, Dow, momentum. The purest, clearest, truest expression of momentum is our trend break strategy, right? So the trend break is, is, what, we, is what we like to use as our first and foremost go-to strategy, right? However, what if you said to yourself, what if you said to yourself, um, or not if you would, you said yourself, what I've noticed is that when we have a strong positive trend throughout the day, the negative trends fail. When we have a strong negative trend, the positive trends fail, meaning that the breakouts, the negative breakouts fail to, to meet target or don't even happen altogether in, 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 a, in a strong positive trend. And in a strong negative trend, the positive breakouts fail to meet target or don't happen at all, right? So what if you said to yourself, okay, I'm going to refine my rules to this following additional condition. I'm going to look at my trend break signal. So if I have a trend break signal, right? Instead of rushing into the trade, rushing into the trade um, right away, I'm going to ask myself the following question. Was the, the prior trend slice, so in this case, it's a very, very small trend slice. In, in the prior trend slice, right, which is by very definition, the prior trend slice is going, to be, is going to be the opposite of the trend slice you're in. In the prior trend slice, did the trade go to profit? And if the answer is no, under any conditions. In other words, if there was no trade, if the trade didn't go to profit, then yeah, it's all green lights, I'm raring to go, right? So I get long here, you could actually see this on my algo. Yeah, there was, there was no trade, I get long here, boom, right? And now I actually didn't do this one because I was, uh, I, 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 you know, did not, it, it was a fast switch and I'm kind of doing this manually right now. And then the next, so now I get this, so I make, I make profit, right? Now I, get, now I get this signal over here, right? And I ask myself the same question. In the prior trend slice, did the trade go to profit? If the answer is no, I get long. Getting long here would have been another beautiful trade for the upside, right? So it's a very, very, does everybody understand the basic conditionality of the, uh, of the idea? Um, it basically says, if the prior contingency is false, meaning like if the, if the prior situation falsifies this breakout idea or puts it into doubt, then step away. Now, where this is really, really valuable, and this is where, where it really comes in handy, is uh, that's correct. Um, Boris is saying there was no breakout. So again, let's understand, let's understand all I'm asking. In order to invalidate, invalidate this signal, the only thing that invalidates the signal is if there was a break down to the downside that went to profit, that went to profit, okay? Do you understand me? So if there was a sell trade that was profitable, then I don't take the first buy signal to the upside. But if there was no sell trade that was profitable, if there was not if every, every other possibility besides a sell trade that was profitable, I am willing to take this breakout. Is that clear, Boris? So the, easy, the, the easier way to see this is the opposite way, is the opposite way, okay? When we're trading the, 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 the short side, okay? The short side, okay? Um, and this is actually very, very interesting. So um, here's a short uh, signal, right? 
And the question I want to ask myself is, in the prior trend slice, was there a profitable positive trade? The answer actually is no. The answer is no. This trade fails. This trade fails, right? It was not profitable. Therefore, all systems go, I go short, right? I go short, right? Now, here we go over here. Here we go over here. Now I ask myself, this is such a long trend break that you can't even see it, Jesus. Um, wow, it's, it's, it's a massive trend. So let me go back and see. First of all, let's establish that in this particular trend slice, obviously this was a profitable trade. Does everybody see this? Somebody give me a yes and, and let's establish that, um, that we have a condition here. We have a, we have a profitable condition. The prior trend break has a profitable condition. Does everybody see this? Okay. So if the prior trend break has a profitable condition, and this is a very, very, very long, long, long trend break, I now have a negative signal. The question I ask myself is, in the prior trend slice, was there a profitable condition? If the answer is yes, I do not trade. No trade. No trade means no loss, because as you can see, this does not go to my target. It's basically you know, barely, it just has a little bit of a push and then it goes right back up. So the beauty of this um, setup is it saves you losses. Saving you the losses, even if sometimes it, it, it doesn't take all the profits, saving you losses is like, is like winning twice, right? Because each loss is almost two times as big as the profit. So saving you losses is as valuable as making you profits, in many ways more so, right? And this is a very, very interesting way to save losses. Because what you, th what you think about what all of this is doing is saying, oh, there was a massively strong trend. And therefore, whatever signal that follows a massively strong trend is not going to be statistically a really, really strong trend. Reversal. So now, yes, occasionally it'll be a pure V shape, big deal. I, I pass up on that trade, but but the question isn't isn't that occasionally. What you need, what you want to do is, do you have confidence of seventy to seventy five percent that this sell signal is going to be a big sell signal? And the answer is no, because obviously the precondition to this was a big strong uptrend, right? The big big strong uptrend. Okay, and that's you know that's what makes it you know such an interesting um, filter as you go along, right? Here's another good example. By the way, this was a positive resolution. I know it's hard to believe, but I can actually show this to you on, um, hang on a second, let me just pick and pull this. I gotta, I gotta, I'll show you the actual trade that, that happened. It really was, it was kind of like a massive, massive big move here. Where is this? Hang on, let me just, I'm just pulling it to, to that thing so you guys can, can can believe me that this was a positive trade. So this was a positive trade right over here. You see that? You see this is it's the same, it's that time frame. So um, because it was a positive trade, sorry, I'm just setting up my uh, my algo here. Um, because it was a positive trade, right? This sell signal is not taken not take it. Again, you save yourself losses. You save yourself losses. Now, here's, what, here's where it gets even, even more interesting, right? So um, now you're here. Now you're here. Now you flip around to the long side and you say to yourself, well, was the prior trade a positive trade? There was actually no trade taken, right? The, 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 the algo did not, did not take the, the short trade, but it also wasn't a positive trade. It never, it never went full 12 points in my direction. So the answer is no, there was no profitable trade here in the prior slide. So I can, I can go long here. Going long here puts me right back into, into, into a profitable trade. So the whole idea here is we know the entry criteria, right? But now we know the avoidance criteria. And the avoidance criteria is that final, final overlay filter that makes everything that much better. That's basically the key point that I wanted to, to describe to you as you are looking at any of these charts, you know, whether they be long or short, 
um, you know, small, small time frames of small time. Does that make sense to everybody? So given these conditions, you know, we don't have a, we don't obviously don't have a trade right now in the NASDAQ, but let's just analyze everything under this. And let me just sort of, uh, hang on a second. I'm oh, sorry. Um, I want to save this as, um, I will save it as a default. Um, Save it. I don't care. Uh, no, I don't want to say. Yeah, I don't want to save it as default. I want to save it as. Let's just say. Filter. All right. Let's put the let's put the filter on here. So, um, was the prior condition a positive trade? No. So the German, is a go. So let's just for argument's sake, you know, we're long uh, five, uh, 15,100, you know, 101, right? So let's say we're long 100, stop is 20, um, at 80, at, at 15,480, targeting 15,10, 15,11, for argument's sake, okay? Let's get into the German, because that's actually a relatively legitimate trade. Let's see if we can get, you know, um, 10, 11 out of this move. But, you know, it's the German, so you never know. Um, but that's a relatively legitimate trade here on the, on the German. Um, let's go to, where's my Dow? Here's the Dow. Um, did, did the Dow, so this was, we sold here, close 25, what's the low here? Wait, I'm confused. Low is 14. Yeah, low is 14. Did not actually, did not make my close here at 25. Did not actually make my target. Did not make my target. So if we get a trend breakout um, level here, we should take it. We should take this move in the, uh, in the Dow. You know, we should see how it's, uh, how it plays itself out. Okay. Let's go look at um, the euro, euro yen. I'm actually, you know, I was going to play around. Let's just since since uh, we're kind of scalping today, we can we let's just go to the one minute chart and play around with this uh, on a filter. Um, let's just see if we can make like a like like the same conditionality here. So in this particular case. Um, this, this, this does make a profit. So we, you know, anything that, if it turns back to the upside, we don't want to take that trade. We don't want to take that trade. Um, I'm sorry guys, just one second, one second. Uh, sorry, maybe. Um, um, okay. Um, so, uh, Euro yen, euro yen, not a not a buy side, given the fact that the sell side made you know made profit, right? On, on the one minute, just just sort of using this this conditionality. Let's go to dollar cad filter. Where's my filter? Uh, okay, this is interesting. So whenever we have a blue arrow with no no signal, that means it's a fail. There's there's no trade here. There's no fail to the short side. Which means that if we break to the long side and we get an arrow, that's that's a legitimate signal for us, you know, to the upside. Here's the um, euro dollar on a filter. Um, so I'm, I'm basically using five five pips as my target. Euro dollar makes you know profit here, so the the, the move to the long side would not be a uh, um, a trade for us. Um, pound to the upside. This is a very, very mature trend, so we don't have a trade here. Um, but again, failure, right? Failure to the short side 
break to the upside, legitimate trade would certainly would have made five, you know, five points for us here. All right, pound yen. Let me pound kiwi, the world's most crazy pair. Let's go to the filter. Um, no, this is even though this is a signal, we wouldn't take it. We would not take this signal. Uh, it may work, may not work. That's not the point. The point is we're filtering because this signal to the long side, and you know, in, in pound kiwi, you cannot trade 10 five, you got to trade minimum 20 10. Um, you know, if you give yourself 20, it survived the, um, I think would have survived this move here. I have no idea. I think so. Yeah. What is this close? Close is 14. Low is, yeah, it would have survived, survived a 20 point move and it obviously 20 or 24 points up here, you know, made the money. And by the way, whether it works or it doesn't work, you can already see that the sell off here is not working right now. It's not going your way. And the, the, the filter idea definitely helping you um, in, uh, in trading it, you know, definitely helping you. Okay. Um, No, no, nothing here. You know, we got, we got no, uh, uh, no trades. I mean, presumably, presumably, I mean, we, we, oh, sorry, this is a 50 minute chart. Let's go to one minute chart. I'm looking at a one minute chart. This is where I want to go. Okay. So one minute chart. Um, yeah. Uh, we should be, let's just say we're long here at 71, 10 stop, five target, just for argument's sake. Because that's a legitimate, you know, upside trade that we, you know, that we wish to take. What was the uh, the euro yen? I had nothing. Dollar cat, we had nothing. Euro dollar was nothing. Pound was too late. Um, and yeah, I guess dollar yen is the dollar yen is the only trade we have for like a 76, 77 target if that works. Um, the German is, you know, very much flat doing nothing as the German does. The Dow, Dow still not breaking out. NAS not really doing anything. Um, anyway, NAS, NAS trade was here. The NAS trade was here. Uh, so, you know, now we just have to be very patient to see, you know, to see what happens. But yes, this is gonna make you do less trades, but it's gonna make you do better trades. That's so much better. Don't you think that, um, I mean, we can always find opportunities, you know, we can always, always find opportunities. Um, the question is, we want to find good opportunities, right? Avoidance criteria is, is what you need. Yeah. Um, yeah, and those are, those are actually the hardest to come up with, you know, because <coughs> they have to be intelligent. And so that's why, you know, I always feel like it's a very, very um, iterative process. We get, to, we get to, to, to the entry criteria, we get to the um, structure criteria, or structure criteria, then entry criteria, and then eventually avoidance criteria to, um, to refine the process. The very, very last component, which is going to be a very much a work in progress is the risk management criteria because, because the really interesting trade here, and that's the very hard trade, is how do you capture this? How do you capture not the first 10 points, but the next 100? And that's, you know, that's gonna be something we uh, um, will have to work on. But uh, um, yeah, I'm convinced with this filter. It makes it makes absolute sense because because the filter um, the filter here is based upon um, breakout levels, and uh, in a I mean you could you could see you could see, uh, if you want me to show you. Let me see if I can do this, Boris. Let me see if I can go back to. Um, let me just go back. What was like um, 0, 0, 3, 20, 7, 2021, right? Oh, wait, hold on. I screwed this up. 
Let's screw this up. I'm trying to. I'm trying to go back. Why is this not? Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I ha I know how to do this on my MT5. I'm just trying to go back a couple of days when you when you can see the the negative trades. I don't know why this is not working. All right, let's see if I can just manually scroll my way back. Um, scroll my way back into into a very very strong um, negative trend when we had it. Okay, here's a, here's a strong negative trend. Let me just you know I can give you a thousand examples, but you can see them yourself. So. Here's a negative trend, right? Remember, we only take the trade. In this case, actually, I think you, this this filter may may not have worked. Let me just see. So you close at seventy, and how how high did this go up against you? No, no, it you would have survived it. You had twenty points. Um, so in the prior trend, the trade fails, right? There's there's no positive trade. It, it all we're looking for is no tr no positive trade. It's a it's a uh, stop. You get long, it gets stopped out, right? So therefore, if the prior trade is a, is a, is no trade or a stop out, if, as long as the prior trade is not a profit, we go. As long as the prior trade is not a profit, we go. So it's not a profit. Therefore, we go short. Boom. Super super easy trade, right? Um, now here the filter didn't work. I mean, yes, you know, you you would have taken you into a long trade because the prior slice was not a profit. You still would have taken the trade, and yes, you know, it um, um, it clearly didn't work. But um, uh, let me just see something. Um, so not a profit, the short worked, right? You're coming into here, this trade actually works because not a profit, long works over here, right? This trade fails. I know maybe it doesn't fail, I'm not sure. I, like it depends on, cause this, this, is, this is all Asia. This is always, always the worst time. It's 87, how high does this go? No, it actually would have, would have, would have worked. Even this would have worked. This, this, this long works, right? Now this short, this short, um, one of the one of the problems with this with this filter in the Asia session is, you know, you're on the short side over here, right? You're on the short side over here, and you just don't know um, if this trade is positive or not because because the Asia movements are so so small that sometimes it takes a couple of cycles to resolve it. So. You're not always going to have the filter working. Obviously, the filter works the best starting from the European time frame onward when you have bigger moves, right? When you have these incredibly tiny moves, you simply, you know, you don't at this point, you don't know what the information is. It's inconclusive, right? So um, it's neither profitable nor unprofitable. It's in trade. So if it's actually in trade, you wouldn't even, you know, if it was on the one side of the trade, you wouldn't even take this short, right? Because it's in trade, and you would see it resolve to trade before it goes. But you can see it. Yeah, you, know, you can you can see how how um, it gives you an edge. It just I mean, all we're looking for is the edge. Now, yes, sometimes um, the avoidance keeps you from from positive trades. You, you know, your this trade uh, makes money, so you would not have taken this trade. And the one time where this filter fails is in a V-shaped, you know, V-shaped move. But those V-shaped moves are very, very rare. And, and you know, I'd rather give up the profit than and save myself a loss than take every profit I can, but then also take every loss I can. That's you know, it's it's that's really the um, um, the situation that you want. I, this went to our profit, by the way. I don't know if anybody traded traded the uh, the DAX that went to ten while I was you know jabbering my mouth. Um, I don't know where the yen is. The yen is doing nothing. So the yen is the yen is just kind of like you know hanging. That's the only that's the only other call I had right now. Um, pound kiwi not doing anything. Pound is not a trade for us because this was a positive trade. So again, and, the, and this is what I'm saying to you, boys, and this especially on a one minute chart, you know where it's really really 
noisy. Yes, I'm going to miss profitable trades. But if you go under the assumption that my, pro that my loss costs me twice as much as my profit, and if I can avoid, if I can avoid a loss, I'm actually gaining twice as many profits, um, or you know, what, maybe like 60%, you know, 60% of profit, which is where I'm at. Um, it's a better strategy, you know. If this was a situation where it was making me making me lose, if it was making me avoid every single positive trade, yeah, it's not a good filter, but it's not doing that. It's not doing that. It's maybe, maybe out of every three trades that are possible, I take only two. But if I can avoid that one loser, I'm way ahead. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so what do we got here? Year again, dollar cad. There's just nothing going on. The, the currencies are, are currencies are, are so slow. It's, it's it's hilarious. That's why I love trading currencies on an algo basis because I can I can't even um, look at them because they're so boring. Um, so you know, caddy was a trade here, but we just we just weren't there to take it. Um, so the only thing that we have right now going on is the German. Um, Nasdaq, we can go. Uh, Nasdaq's got nothing. Nas Nasdaq is bunching up. I mean, at this point, you know, your guess is as good as mine as to where it goes because I, you know, it looks like it can be tired. It looks like it could extend a little bit more, um, but it's you know, it's just a guess. Oh, Dow, 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 Dow. Okay, so let's hang because you know maybe the Dow is, is the only thing that's kind of going to set us up. What's happened here? Failed to break to the upside. No positive, no profitable trade to the upside. If we get a downside signal, right? If we get a down signal, let me just put a filter on here. I don't have a filter on here. If I get a down signal, um, that would be a legitimate signal because we failed the upside, right? Conversely, it's, it's super, super, you can see markets are just very, very um, inconclusive. Moving averages are super tight. There's just, there's no expansion of range. So if we turn back up, this, this area then becomes a failed uh, sell signal. We have a legitimate buy signal if we have a breakout, right? I consider, so to make it really, really clear, I consider everything a failure unless there was a profitable trade on the opposite side. If there's a profitable trade on the opposite side, I stand down. Otherwise, I'm ready to go. Is that clear, Raphael? Is that clear? I know you came in a little bit late. I just want to make sure everybody gets uh, gets the uh, gets the idea. And you know, to answer your question, Boris, is it you know is it the absolute necessity to have this filter? No, it's not, because you can see that you know when I'm trading FX, I don't have the filter, and both you know, and in, in, in the grander scheme of things, the edge is good enough to give me net profitable positions. But I want the absolute best possible edge. I want the cleanest, clearest positions, even if that means I'm going to have less trades because I want, um, you know, I want to try to, I, in a perfect world, I want to do four trades, three winners, right? To do that every day, I want to do four trades, three winners. To do that, I want to have as, as much intelligence as possible to make my decision um, accurately. Okay, I mean, it's all a probability game. It's all a probability game, but um, you, the way you play probabilities is, is by gathering intelligence all the time, right? Keeping your eyes open. And that's all I'm trying to do. Actually, one thing we haven't looked at is the S&P. Well, S&P is just, you know, also very, very, very extended. Um, S&P had a buy signal here, a buy signal here, because this was a, you know, failed. There was, there was no sell possibilities. You know, S&P was the same. 
S and P. Hey, Jonathan, are you in the room today? Is Jonathan in the room? Let me see who's in the room here today. Maybe Jonathan is not in the room. Jonathan is Mr. S and P. No, he's not in the room today. Too bad. He's Mr. S and P. Um, you know, S and P is 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 a sort of a very low volatility, excellent excellent instrument for this kind of a structure. Um, I like trading S and P with a four six. Um, I think it's. Let me see if. If four, four is 60, yeah, maybe it's, it's actually even a bigger, I don't know if, if you might want to make it three and a half. No, I guess four divided by six is, oh, it's 66. Yeah, I guess three and a half would be, would be the easy, three and a half points to target six points to stop as a, as a reasonable ratio. You're winning in the S&P, good for you. Um, I'm actually, I only trade NAS. I mean, I only trade NAS and, you know, everything else is on algo, but, but I'm really looking at the S and P, especially now what I like about this is, um, with the, in the S and P, the filter, I think is, is even more important because S and P will, because of its low volatility, will you know, you really want to be sure that you're in a trend. You really want to be sure that you're in a momentum move, um, when you're trading S and P, right? So failed, you know, fail trade here, great long trade here, right? Fail trade here, I'm not sure you actually got it. Here, what is that, 94, and you're looking for, and here it fails, you know, so, okay, so it's fine. I mean, that, that trade fails. Um, this is a trade, that works, you would have suppressed this trade, right? Suppressed this trade. So you, you know, you would have taken the short here uh, because this long failed. That would have worked. You wouldn't have taken this long, uh, which is fine. It's just you know part of the business. But on the other hand, the next signal over here gave you another entry long, and that would have that would have worked beautifully, and you would have traded that. Um, so again, that's my point. Yes, I'm going to miss, let's say there's three potential trades. I'm only going to take two of them. But uh, as a result of that, I may avoid a loser, which is effectively like, like being plus two. So, you know, it's like taking four positive trades. The whole point is very, very focused um, in the way that we're trading to win three out of four times. If I can do that consistently across every possible asset, we have a tremendous edge in this setup. That's really where it's that's really where it's all coming down to. Um, where's the Dow? Dow's dicking around doing nothing. Okay, so Dow kind of breaking to the upside, you know, looking for a uh, looking for a move here. NAS is actually breaking the other way. So we don't really have, you know, any setups right now. It's just sort of, it, it's, it's, I'm like so shocked that, I, you know, we had the ism, markets kind of just died. I mean, I, I look at how, look how dead they are, 10 to 11. We just literally have no, I mean, this is a Dow and it's a freaking 20 point range. This does it in, in 20 seconds, All right? It's breaking out. I kind of, you know, this is not a standard trade by no means am I, you know, this is, this is just a, um, a pure gamble, but I, I kind of do like the Dow here at the 64s. So, you know, I would buy the 64s, uh, you know, with like a 30 stop, I guess, and maybe maybe a 10, 12 target. Let's see if we can, you know, like, like, let's see if we can make 76 at least, because it really, it looks, Dow to me looks like, because because we failed again, using this analysis, we know we failed to the downside, it look like they want to they want to push it a little bit higher. Let's see if we can break it up a little bit to the 76s. I mean, it's not not a not a kosher trade, but not a horrendous trade. I'm just trying to find some some good ideas. So if we can get up to 76, we'll we'll take our profit there.
75. All right, 75 is good enough. I would take it here. It's like eight, nine points. It's actually going to, I think it's going to 76 looks to me, but then, you know, it, it wasn't really a, a, a true setup of ours, but it was close enough in the sense that, that, you know, that I'm watching the failed, the failed here and just trading the flow. I'm just trading the flow where, you know, where the, I'm trying to go with where the market wants to go um, because clearly it didn't want to go down here, right? It showed me that it didn't want to go down here. Um, and it's the, be the beauty of the uh, of the indicator is it can really show you um, if if you open your eyes to it, it can show you the basic um, message of where the market is thinking of doing. Now, you know that message somebody could that message could lie to you also, of course, but the point is more often than not, it's telling you something interesting. It's telling you something interesting. Um, so, anyways. So it's kind of held it back. So, all right, so we'll take eight in the Dow, we'll take 10 in the German. Nothing else is going on over here. The, the, the yen is actually, the yen is not working at all. So we gotta, we gotta take our 10 loss in the yen. So that's, you know, that failed because I took, this was a failed, I took this trade over here and it just didn't extend because, you know, that's the yen, that's fine. Um, Let's see if there's anything else on the. Uh... Oh, what was this? Dollar cat? Cat had it. How did we miss this? Oh, damn it. We missed this. So, caddy was a trade here for five points. Sorry, we just, I just, that was, I, I wasn't watching the caddy. Um, and that was, that would have been a legitimate trade. You see how this failed over here? This long breakout here was, was totally legitimate. Uh, let's see what's going on with the Dow. Uh, Dow is still, still putzing around. Um, Okay, NASDAQ, okay, so this is a failed down, right? Failed down, right? Which means we're now building a new trend slice, which means that we, if we have a trend breakout signal here, that would be a legitimate trend breakout signal here. So we could, uh, we could entertain the idea of possibly um, trading this to the upside. It's very long in the tooth, but you know, hey, it's been a lot of power in the, uh, um, uh, in in the NAS, so it can go further. But obviously, we would need to have a trend breakout signal, right? So we don't have that so far. All we know, all we know, is that the prior trend segment failed, which means now we we can look forward to a possible signal in the uh, in the NAS. So we suppressed the trade in pound Kiwi, which would have worked you know, to the downside, which is fine. I mean, that's, you, you're always gonna have trade-offs in any kind of a filter you have. Um, similarly, we suppressed the trade in a pound, which also would have, you know, would have worked to the downside. Again, fine, because uh, like I said, for every trade you give up on a winning side, you may also avoid a losing trade. And that's um, a more important um, dominant structure. Okay, Euro has nothing. Dow is, you know, crawled its its way up to seventy six. I mean, anybody anybody trade the Dow on that call? No. Yes. Um, nothing on the S and P because we're still on trend. So sort of a very, very quiet day today, guys, as far as um, trade idea goes. The German worked, the Dow worked, the Yen did not. Um, the NAS is not doing anything right now to, uh, to trigger us. And, uh, you know, we can just watch it. Karen took it down, yeah? That, that worked. But you can see, Karen, you see what I'm saying about how, how if you study the prior trend slice, 
you might get an edge on the current trend slice because the most recent information is telling you the positioning of the bulls and the bears, um, you know, on, on the structure and who's who, you know, who has the upper hand. I mean, you know, on the, on the fund side, it's, it's pretty obvious that, we, that, that everything is positive because, because of Biden's, um, Biden's uh, infrastructure bill. But we're not trading fund that we're trading the actual price action. So we need to have that conf confirming it to us. Um, DD, I think is DAX. Yeah, I don't trade the DAX future. So, but I think it is the, yeah, it is a DAX. There is, there's a mini DAX that's coming out, which everybody should be really uh, interested in because that's going to be really, really great. Um, the DAX gave a breakout signal. Well, I'm, I'm, we're only trading, C, I'm only trading CFDs. I don't see a breakout signal here. The breakout signal was here. We took that and we made money over here. So that was it. You know, that was, that was our only trade in the DAX. Wow, guys, literally the dead of Asia has more action than what we're seeing today. I don't know what's going on. I'm wondering why the markets are so sleepy, but there's literally no action, but it is what it is. So, you know, we don't force it. We just, uh, we just uh, watch the flow. Oh, sorry, the Dow, I'm sorry, we, um, I'm actually watching this. I didn't realize the Dow, so Dow gave a, uh, um, a buy signal. So we should be kind of long here. Let's say we're long here at 79s, 79s, targeting um, like 90. You wanna try to target 90 with a stop at around like 60 or so. Let's see, let's see if we can get an extension here um, and get a move. I'm not even, I, sorry. I'm, you know, trying to watch five different instruments, but this is an okay, this is definitely an okay trade because we had a failed here. We have a legitimate breakout signal here on the Dow. Um, the Dow, I really, I don't like to trade it with a 20 stop. I really like to trade it with a, with a, like a 40 stop, which would be a 40, 20, you know, 24 target, which is really where we should be. But I'm just kind of keeping it tight. We just want to see if we can get up to 90. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Karen, you're absolutely right. I totally forgot. Karen is like, everybody's on, everybody's on vacation. I forgot. This is the single worst week of the year. Single worst week of the year. I totally forgot. You're absolutely right. Um, it's worse than Christmas week. I mean, I, I always forget that Easter week is just dead. So there's nothing going on here. And almost nothing we do is going to really, you know, work for much. So keep that in mind, guys. That's, I totally forgot. This whole week and pretty much into like next week, it's really going to suck. So, um, you know, trade accordingly. Trade, you know, trade, trade very, very small. I totally, I totally forgot why, why the, I, I forgot that all of Europe basically goes on vacation this week and does not come back. So you're right. Um, what do I want to ask you? Oh, so tomorrow, I just want to let you guys know, I added an extra, um, extra, we don't have non-farm payrolls because Kathy and I have, a, have another engagement. So we're not trading non-farm payrolls. But I am going to do another Zoom at 10 o'clock tomorrow, which is you know, really going to be, a, it's going to be a short and good Friday trade on, um, on the New York Stock Exchange. But we'll have you know, post non-farm payrolls. Maybe we'll have a couple of ideas. So, and we'll also have just end of the week, you know, free for all Q&A. So I am, I am going to be with you guys if you guys want to join me 10 o'clock tomorrow, same um, same credentials you know same boom credentials assume credentials you know so all that all that will be there um yeah but i, I tell you karen is karen is right man I, I i always forget like this that this is this is the world's worst worst week to trade um so yeah you know come join me happy easter to everybody market is half day tomorrow market is half day tomorrow uh, yeah i totally understand karen 
you know, so I, you know, it, it was going to be very, very cash. We'll just, we'll just get together. We'll make sure that you guys have all the uh, uh, configurations and, and settings correctly. And, you know, um, any questions you have for me and uh, uh, we'll go through the setup over and over again. Um, but, you know, we're getting very, very, yeah, I think we're, you know, we're in, a, we're in really good, really, really good shape um, as far as uh, trade selection, which is really what we're, you know, we're striving for. I mean, this thing may eventually crawl to 90, but by the time it does, I'll probably be asleep already. So I'm going to leave it here with you guys. We'll, uh, we'll register the trade, you know, it's assuming it resolves in the last half, in the next half an hour. But other than that, uh, still not a bad trade day. You know, we took 20, 20 out of the indices. We got we got clipped a little bit on the on the yen, and uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll just let this one float out, see how it goes. Um, given the fact that it was that it was Easter Thursday, it actually was okay. Um, all right, thank you guys. Any um, any final questions? Anything else on your mind? We're good. In, we're good on everything. Everybody everybody gets the ideas of you know fail trades, um, confirmed trades, you know trend slices, all those things that are so uh, interesting for us. Super, 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 super. All right, I will see everybody later. Everybody have a great, great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 o'clock for those of you who wanna come join me. Take care, bye-bye.